Welcome to Auto Guild. In this video, you will learn how the big block Chevy is different from the small block Chevy. This video is like nothing that's ever been done before. A one-stop, ultimate comparison of power capability, weights, dimensions, valve train, plus all the different displacements and model years, and a bunch of other really cool details that you may not know. If you've seen my other videos, you know you're in for some in-depth, amazing information right now. This video will help you decide which engine is best for you, or at least help you win those late night engine arguments over a beer. And be sure to stay tuned for the end of the video where I will share with you the power output of two identically built engines, a 396 big block and a 400 small block. Let's do this. The small block Chevy came out in 1955, originally in the Corvette, but it soon made it into almost all other passenger cars. The big block originally came out in 1958 as the Mark I, 409, and 348. The Mark IV, which is the big block that we think about when we think about big block Chevy, actually launched in 1965. I'm not gonna go into a long big block history lesson today. If you want me to do a big block history video, let me know in the comments below. Okay, let's start with displacements. The true difference between these two engines is more about displacement, bore, and stroke than overall size of the engine. Keep in mind in this video, I'm focusing mainly on OEM passenger car engine sizes. So it all started with the big block with, as I mentioned, the 348 Mark I big block in 1958. This was mostly for trucks. Later on, the 409 was introduced in 61. But both of those were replaced by the Mark IV series of engines, which is kind of the big block that we know today, the 396, the 427, and the 454. Also, notice that the 402 replaced the 396 in 1970, but Chevy kept calling it the 396 in some passenger cars. And do also note that the big block lived on in trucks, crate engines, and other applications like marine. The small block started in 1955 as a 265 in the Corvette, went all the way up to a 400 cubic inch engine, uh, which started in 1970. The small block lived for a long time, but was eventually replaced by the LS engine in the Corvette in 97. I have a video on the LS engine history. If you're interested, I'll link to it in the description below or stick around till the end of the video. So here's a cool grid comparing the bore and stroke of the small block Chevy, which is in red, and the big block Chevy, which is in blue. The light blue is the Mark I big block, the early ones. And then the gray engines are larger aftermarket big block engine sizes that were available. Well, I should say the 496 was actually the 8.1 liter Vortec, which replaced the 454 in 2001 and was produced until 2009. The 502 came out in 1996 and was originally conceived in the 60s for racing, but it was never available to the public um, until 96. Notice that the 400 small block is bigger than a few of the big blocks. Also, check out on the bottom left, this is actual piston diameter comparison of the 262 small block versus the 572 big block. And I know there are larger big block sizes like 632 and others, but I didn't put those on there because they're kind of ridiculous. Okay, let's talk dimensions a little bit. Yes, the big block is physically bigger. It's five inches wider than the small block. These two images are to scale. Don't believe me? Check out this picture. As you just saw, the big block is also four to five inches taller depending on intake system. And also, it's about three and a half inches longer depending on the accessories and pulley system on the front. Let's talk cylinder heads. Big blocks have a canted valve setup, often known as the porcupine. You can see the valves there at the top sticking out in different angles. This was done to give the valve flow a direct and smooth path to the valves. The small blocks did not have this. Big block heads also came in two versions, rectangular or oval. There's lots of debate over which is better. Each has its own strengths and weaknesses. Original 1960s factory high performance engines featured the larger rectangular ports heads, which have higher airflow rates than the production oval port heads. However, the larger volume of the rectangular ports can produce slower air velocities at lower speeds. Because of this, the smaller port oval heads are often the better choice for a daily driver or street machine. Small block heads have only one style of port shape, and you can see there's a huge difference in weight between the two cylinder heads. And these heads on this picture 
are actually to scale. The small block had the exhaust ports Siamese right next to each other. This created a hot spot in the cylinder head that prevented higher compression ratios and led to a hotter combustion chamber, which usually resulted in loss of power. This is a clear advantage for the big block. Please give me a thumbs up and think about subscribing if you are enjoying this information. Let's talk valves. There were lots of different valve sizes over the years. What I'm showing you here are the smallest to the largest and then the size in the middle that makes for a good high performance engine. And one thing that jumps out right away is how much bigger the big block Chevy valves are than the small block. And bigger valves usually means more airflow and more power. And do also note that the largest small block valves are smaller than the smallest big block valves. However, some people will argue that the small blocks have bigger valves relative to engine size and displacement so they're actually more efficient power makers per cubic inch. But the extra displacement of the big block usually means more total power. There are some super rare OEM original GM heads that had larger valves than the 219-184, but that's the standard size that's still the solid choice. And with small block Chevy, even with aftermarket heads, most of them are using the 2.02 and 1.6 valves. But you can find aftermarket valves in both of these engines that are larger than what you see here. Let's talk engine blocks for a minute. Just like the small block, the big block factory blocks are all iron except the ultra rare Z11 aluminum block from 1969. And as you can see, the small block Chevy block is 60 pounds lighter than the big block. But you can get an aluminum aftermarket big block. It weighs 160 pounds. That's right, 90 pounds less than the iron big block, but it costs $5,000. And stick with me here because in a second, I'm gonna tell you what these engines weigh once everything's put together. But one thing I'm sure everybody's wondering is how much power can each of these take? The old school Mark IV original blocks from the 60s and into the early 90s could handle about 900 horsepower, the later engines a little bit less. On the small block side, you're looking at 360 to 550 horsepower depending on the age of the block. Please note that both of these engines live on as crate motors in some form. If you are into muscle cars and want Auto Guild's unmatched level of information, then please subscribe. From the factory, the big blocks rarely see more than 5,000 RPM, and that was especially true for the early engines. The more recent big blocks can hit up to 5,500 RPM, but that's about the limit, and that's mostly due to the heavy valve train of the big block. Okay, so here we are at total engine weight. A complete assembled big block engine is around 110 pounds more than the small block, give or take the drive accessories, which vary slightly by engine. And remember, 60 pounds of that is just the block itself. I should also note that an aluminum LS engine will be about 200 pounds lighter than the big block. And that weight is off the front of your car too. So that's really gonna help the performance, handling, braking, everything of your car by switching from a big block to an LS. This is one of the main reasons I wanna swap an aluminum LS into my 68 Camaro. If that sounds interesting to you, I've got a few videos on the LS engine. Please check out my channel and some of the other videos. But if you wanna get the weight down on the big block, there are ways. Stick around and I'll show you in a sec. It's possible to have a big block that's the same weight as an iron small block. So the big block is physically bigger and has a larger displacement and can generally make more power, but a big block has big needs. The big block is generally more expensive to build. It's going to have worse fuel economy. It takes much more space in the engine bay. It's going to be harder to maintain the big block because there's less room to work on it. You don't wanna to have to pull engines to change spark plugs. It's also going to require stiffer front springs if you're going from a small block to a big block and bigger brakes because of the extra weight. And you may also wanna to upgrade to bigger front wheels and tires. It may also require a carb swap and header clearance could be more of an issue because there's less room to run the headers. And if you're running huge displacement, it could require a larger exhaust like a three inch. And when you run a big block, there's less room for other also important stuff like air conditioning, brake boosters, steering boxes, steering linkage, accessory drives, and cooling is also more challenging. A larger radiator may be required. As I mentioned, it's possible to make a big block as light as a small block. But first, I wanna ask the big block owners out there or those of you that are considering a big block, do you even care? 
Do you even care about engine weight? I'm kind of guessing not, but leave a comment in below and let me know what you think. So how do you build a big block that's lighter than a small block? Have the best of both worlds, have your cake and eat it too. I will show you how. So we know that the aluminum big block is already thousands of dollars, so forget about that. What you need are these five items. Want to stop for a second and recommend a couple of books if you are planning to build a small block or a big block. These books come in two versions, a budget version and a high performance all out version. I've used these books in the past for LS and axles and all kinds of other stuff. They've got tons of books on any topic you can imagine. They're really, really popular in this space. Everybody's using these. I've got links in the description below if you are interested. I highly recommend them. So what would happen if you built an identical 396 big block and a 400 small block, exactly the same, same cam, both with ported heads? Hot Rod did it back in 1998. The big block produced 41 more horsepower and 22 more foot-pounds of torque than the small block. Power was achieved at 200 RPM below that of the small block. But the big block cost $1,300 more than the small block. I adjusted that number for inflation. It was actually $850 at the time. They also took the two to the quarter mile track. In the same car, the big block went about three tenths quicker in the quarter mile. But the big block costs more, like I said, but also weighed 140 pounds more. So there are factory small blocks that can achieve the power and torque of the big blocks. But the big blocks can do this kind of power continuously under heavy load and in heavy duty situations over long periods of time. So that's the reason why you tend to see big block motors in bigger medium duty trucks and other hardcore applications. Remember though that both the big block and the small block were replaced by the LS engine starting in 1997. If you want to learn more about that LS engine, then click on the upper left video right now, my ultimate LS engine overview, which has every single LS engine ever made and in all the applications that it came on. I also have a video on the upper right there, the best LS engine for any budget. If you're curious about how the LS engine compares to the small block Chevy, I've got a video on that down in the lower left. Click on those right now. Thanks for checking out Auto Guild and good luck with your project.